Howdy folks, Ray from LoveYourRV.com here once again, coming to you from a really cool camp spot we camped at about three years ago and we've just revisited it, called Alabama Hills. Um, what I have for you today is uh, I'm going to do an install and a review of WeBoost's new offering um, for a cellular booster. It's called uh, the Drive 4G-XRV. Um, if you remember, it must be more about three or four months ago, I installed the, the 4G-X system and I installed it with the trucker antenna and a large indoor antenna. Um, now that's worked really well for us and it's kept us online in many spots. Um, but WeBoost is coming out with a brand new offering specially designed just for RVs. So I'm hoping that they're going to solve a problem I was having on the indoor antenna didn't have much range. So you can see this is strictly uh, aimed at the RV market. So they redesigned the, the antennas instead of sort of like a home antenna they have one specifically designed for RVs. So this is the box they sent me. I guess they liked my uh, other review because um, they offer to, to send this out for me free of charge in exchange for review just so you know that up front. Um, before I had the, the WeBoost, the little uh, sleek that I bought with my own money, I was very happy with that and the, the system I installed a few months ago has even improved upon that. So where I am, at, uh, show you this spectacular location, it's up near Lone Pine on the Eastern Sierras and it's just amazing kind of sunset right now but we're right underneath the um, Whitney portal with Mount Whitney the highest mountain in the lower uh, states so super cool only problem is it's gorgeous but we're on the other other side of some major rocks and so we're not getting good uh, cellular connection at all. In fact, you know, on this side over here is the town of Lone Pine, and you can get cell service in there, but all these rocks really block the cell signal. So without a booster, I can't get anything. But with a booster, I'm able to just barely get online. Um, it keeps flickering around, but at least I'm able to get online, check my email, and, and do some stuff. So... Let's unbox this baby. I'm hoping this is going to even improve upon what I have now. Okay. Well, it looks like they're really trying to make it easy to install for the average person. A little bit of an installation overview here with all the parts you need. Got your uh, install manual. Uh, quick res reg registration here. You can use your smartphone or online. Um, it's a quick little pamphlet. Um, I noticed here they got need help, contact us directly. They got a, a, a website and a phone number, 866 number, and they're nice enough to include a little note to me. So they seem like a pretty good company to deal with. I noticed when you open the box here we have install box A, start installation with this box, steps 1, 2, 3, 6, 8. And second installation box, step contents four, five, seven. Install box B. So, yeah, okay. We'll open those boxes and see what we got in there. Okay, so I'm at step one here, and this is the outside antenna. So that's a lot smaller than my trucker antenna. And you can see by the diagram here, it's got it mounted on the the ladder which is where I mounted my trucker antenna so I think I'm gonna mount it you know on the ladder as well so we can I'm gonna mount them in the same location so we can kinda of get a, a comparison between the system I have and this new system came with a little antenna installation guide and the hardware for mounting so that's step one that should be easy enough Okay, so here's the next box. We have steps 2, 3, 6, and 8. 2 and 3 
drill hole where you want the cable to go into your RV. Connect RG6 cable to outside antenna and route through rubber ring of cable entry cover, then into newly drilled hole. Okay, I've already uh, have a hole drilled in my RV because I've already installed their earlier kit. So I'll be doing it that way, but it's kind of nice that they have this all step by step. Step six, there's your cable entry hole. And they give you all the hardware you need to uh, cover it up and make it leak proof. And then we have two power sources here. You can go, if you're on full hookups all the time, you could use the 110 wall power plug that they include. And for guys like me that do a lot of boondocking, I'm going to want to go with the 12-volt system. So it's nice that they supplied the 12-volt uh, power pack there, too. That's important because usually you're going to be on the fringe when you're boondocking, so you really need a 12-volt supply. So that's cool. Let's skip ahead to uh, show you in the install B-Box, see what's in there. Okie doke, in the B box, we have steps 4 and 5 and 7. So 4 and 5 determine where you want to mount the booster, then mount by removing mounting bracket, and mounting the bracket, then placing booster in bracket. So yeah, this is, uh, I already have one of these in here. This is the heart of the system, this is what does all the amplification of the cell signals and boosts it up for you between the two antennas. And over here we have the indoor antenna and we have the, the cable. I think there's 20 feet of cabling so you can mount it where you like. It looks like it just stands somewhere. So this is going to be hopefully the improvement to the system. Now the old antenna, let's go over here, that white thing you see there that's kind of a wall mount antenna meant for a house and you can see where I have my MiFi and my phone very close to it because it doesn't broadcast very far at all because I think between the outside an antenna and the inside antenna because they're meant for a house they're supposed to have more separation than I can provide so I think what they've done here is uh, redesigned the antennas because an RV is a very small space, we're only like 180 square feet in here. So, there you go, that's all the parts. I have to give them kudos for the packaging, really well packaged, and the instructions and everything, everything's well laid out, so it, uh, very good instructions. So that's pretty good for today. Unboxing's good enough for me, because, uh, I think it's time to enjoy a happy hour and take in this beautiful view out here. Wow. So this is up near Lone Pine, California off Highway 395 on the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Just a gorgeous spot. Still got lots of snow on the mountains. So enough playing around with gadgets, I'm going to join Ann for a happy hour. Well, gorgeous location, but it's not proving to be a very good uh, test bed for uh, the new booster. Both the boosters, the, the existing one I have and the new RV one, will get me online, but just barely. If I don't have either of the, the boosters, I, I can't even get a signal. So. Their signal is so weak here, even with a boost, I'm getting too much of a erratic operation. It'll connect to 4G and then it'll, it'll quit and then it'll connect to 2G, 3G, it keeps flipping around. And even when I'm connected with what looks like a good signal, I'm not getting uh, very much throughput at all. So I think I'm going to have to wait, um, give, it, give it an honest test, wait till I get to a little bit better uh, area here. So. I'll wait on my install till I can compare the two systems for you. Anyway, stay tuned folks. Okay, so it's a few weeks later now and we've made it out of the Alabama hills down to the coast 
and we're at a spot where I actually did a major test on the, the original uh, WeBoost install there with the trucker antenna. So I wanted to come to this exact spot because here we get only one bar, if we're lucky, of um, 4G signal. So it was a good place to test the two and they are uh, boosting pretty well comparable to each other. They'll boost it up to three or four bars and they'll boost up my speeds quite a bit. Like I'm able to stream YouTube videos where without the booster I wasn't able to stream at all. I'm getting pretty good downloads and I was even able to upload a half of a gig uh, video to YouTube today. So I'm happy with the, the new RV um, WeBoost system. So what I'm going to do now is take out my old system, the one with the trucker antenna that I installed last fall, and then I'm going to show you how I install the the new uh, WeBoost uh, RV uh, kit. So let's start with that antenna. I'm going to mount it on the same ladder spot as the old one and I'll run the wiring in the same spot I did before. But I'll kind of give you a, a walkthrough of the the kit they give you in case you want to use that to, to go through the sidewall of the RV. Let's go. At least we got some sunshine finally. It's been pouring. Okay, so I've taken off my trucker antenna. And I'm going to mount the, the new RV antenna right on the ladder just to, to kind of do exactly what they say in the instructions here. If you look down here, they have uh, listed as a mounting position right there on your ladder. Um, first hiccup I've come into is the hardware they supplied looks for a giant pole, like the ladder is pretty small and they have this huge clamp. So that tells me it's probably meant for an external mounting pole on a house or something. So uh, yeah, it'll work, but I might have to modify that, make it a little better of a mount, or make my own mount, maybe a, a, a little bit of a mast off the ladder and put it on there. Anyway, I'm just going to, for test purposes, mount it there. Now I've taken, uh, cut the Eternavon tape that I used to, to do my lead dress along the roof there. A lot of people have asked me, well what happens if you need to change it? Well I'll just run a new line and I'll put a whole new uh, piece of tape on it and it'll be fine. Um, I'm not going to do what they suggest if you look in this step here. They have a cable entry hole and the outside antenna comes down and loops for a drip loop. So they want you to do drill, drill a hole possibly in the side of your RV wall. Um, I'm not going to do that. Here's the kit they give you with little uh, stick-on things to, to, to hold the cable there. And then that's the little button that uh, waterproof cover. I'm not going to do that because I've already built myself, if you saw in that uh, previous video, because I have a backup camera here, um, I already had a, a hole drilled into the rig on the roof here and a junction box. So I'm going to utilize that like I did with the other, uh, the other system rather than drill a hole in the side of the rig. This has proved pretty good. It's worked out fine. So well, let me run that line in there and then uh, be able to go inside and continue the install. So you can sort of see what I'm doing here. We've got the antenna mounted to the ladder. I'll run the wire along there, put some more turnabon tape for lead dress, and then it's all going down in the same spot that my uh, backup camera goes down. And uh, I had to pull apart all the sealant, but I'll reseal all that so it'll all be watertight. Okay, so now we should be able to go inside and start uh, start mounting the, the equipment in there. So there's where the antenna wire is coming down. The white wire and black wire is of course my backup camera. And I'm putting the mount over here where I had it before. It's nice because it's all inside this rear cabinet. Kind of tucked out of the way. And then I'm going to run uh, for power. I'm going to tap in over here behind this control panel. There's lots of uh, 
12 volt power so I'm going to splice the 12 volt uh, power supply in there so it'll all be tucked in behind there as well let me just show you the two power options it has you can power the Wii Boost with just a, a normal wall household wall socket there but I'm gonna wire mine into the 12 volt circuitry because I do a lot of off-grid camping so be nice just to have it so I can run right off the batteries so you can see here we've got uh, a red and a black wire for 12 volt positive and ground so you just have to find somewhere in your rig where you can uh, hook that up just to have a little converter box here what we got here um, input 12 or 24 volts, output 5 volts DC, current 3 amps max. Okay, a little converter box. So I'm just going to splice in to my 12 volt behind that control panel, and I should be able to uh, power up the Wii Boost all the time. Okay, so I'm going to splice into the same uh, power and ground that I used for my uh, backup camera and that is placed into the porch light which uh, should be able to handle the current no problem I've actually swapped up swapped out my porch light for an LED there used to be a big uh, incandescent bulb out there so uh, I should have lots of extra capacity in that line I, I see here they have looks like a 2 amp fuse so the amplifier doesn't really draw too much current so should be good to go there so I'm just going to solder those up and then we'll tape them up and put everything away in there I sewed it all back up <clears throat> taped up those wires and there's lots of cabinet back there to store all the wiring I'm going to do the same as I did with my uh, previous uh, antenna. I'll probably keep the, the WeBoost uh, antenna up here. Um, I have some little clips, so I'll probably just use like a little elastic band when I'm traveling. This is super lightweight, so it can sit up there. But then I can also pull the wire out and deploy it up near my desk. That's where I, I'm going to want it. On the other side, so we go through here, there's that 12-volt power wire that I wired in and the antenna wire so I'm going to mount the the drive 4GX amplifier in the same spot it'll fit it'll fit right where my uh, my previous one was some people are probably asking what are you going to do with the old uh, antenna system I think what I'm going to do is move it to the our pickup truck so we'll have a a good cell booster system in the pickup truck for driving around that's what it was actually meant for. It's like a vehicle system meant for truckers, so that'll work out good. And then we'll have this uh, RV specific one for for in the in the trailer here. So I'm gonna mount that up on there. It just snaps in place, really cool. And uh, hook everything up. Kind of dress my wires to make everything neat. And then we'll uh, be able to get to testing the the system out. Leads all dressed out of the way, so I have my storage area back. And uh, for the time being, I'm just going to, when I don't want to use it, just pull the, the plug on it. But um, <clears throat> in the near future, I'm going to grab another one of these uh, switches here. And I noticed on either side of my control panel here, there's blanks. Like I can put one another switch in there, so I'm going to put a switch in just to turn on and off the booster then I won't have to open the cabinet or anything just click it on and off so when I deploy the internal antenna I got a little route going down across and then straight down to my desk so I can put the, the little uh, antenna right beside my work desk here usually where my laptop is phone that sort of thing so uh, That'll work out good. Let's just check what kind of signal we're getting. Looks like about 95 dBm, which is not bad. Looks like I have three bars on there. 
I was getting zero signal. Just let me unplug the, the booster and I'll give you a, a look at that. Okay, so <clears throat> this is one reason I wanted to come back to this location because it's very, very weak service. Usually no service on my T-Mobile phone here. So here's a little app I have for my Android phone called Network Cell Info. And you can see out of service on the phone, no service, blank, cross up there. So uh, let me turn on the, the WeBoost RV uh, system and we'll see if we can get a signal and uh, text and dial out. There we go. So we got minus 95 now showing three bars and I'm connected to T-Mobile. Let's go down and try a text. Um, the thing that texts my balance here. Check my T-Mobile balance. So that's a good way. It's automated text service. So it looks like it's sending. There we go. So that proves I can get a text in and out. Now let's uh, try calling voicemail. Press 1 to listen to your messages. Press 2 to change your personal. You have no new messages awesome. in your voicemail. So that's good. That means I can uh, call in and call out. We're getting internet. And you can see the phone is a, a good distance away from this antenna. Uh, the older antenna there, the big white one, I had to get really close actually. I remember Ann was talking to her brother and she had to put it right beside her head to uh, get the connection. So that's an improvement. Okay, so I got a few more places to try on the coast where I know the signal is really weak. So I'm going to go experiment as we drive up, stop, and uh, see how uh, how the system performs and I'll come back with uh, my pros and cons and my uh, general feelings of the system. Stay tuned. Okay folks, I've tidied up my install a little bit on the outside antenna. You see I've ran the wire underneath some of this uh, Turnabon roof patch tape. That'll keep it all in place there. And I've changed the way I've mounted the, the outside antenna. I really didn't like on how they gave me such a big U-clamp here. It didn't really fit well on my ladder. I figured it would start twisting and stuff. So I drilled a hole through the ladder and then ran the clamp through that and tightened it up and it's really made a solid connection. And it sits nicely above the, the roof line there. So. There we go. Okay, let's go inside and I'll show you uh, another modification I've made there. Like I previously suggested, I uh, put myself a little on-off switch next to my other uh, accessory switches here on the Cougar panel. So now I can simply uh, click that. Bingo! We boost amplifiers off. We want to turn it on. On she goes. So that'll make it a little more convenient for us. Well, I'm back with you again. We've tried a few more places up the coast. Uh, we're now about halfway up the Oregon coast in a spot called uh, Newport, Oregon, and we're in uh, Southside uh, Beach State Park, which is not too far away from the city. So I'm getting. Uh, 4G signals on my devices. Um, right now I got a T-Mobile device um, and we're getting about two bars. It's usually bouncing around 107, 109 uh, dBm for the, the signal strength. Um, this this uh, app I'm using is an Android app called Network Cell Info and it basically uh, finds, uh, takes the Android Android operating systems uh, reporting of the 
the signal strength for the cells. So it's been a pretty good indicator. So you can see it's it's um, just on the edge there. It's it's getting good signal enough to uh, surf the internet. We're getting good uh, phone call contacts out of that. But uh, be a good test bed to see what uh, the different antennas do. Um, earlier on, I tried the different outside antennas. Because if you remember, I had the, the trucker kit installed before, so this is the big trucker antenna here. Also previously, I've had the little Wilson Sleek system, and it uses this little mag mount antenna. So both of those are kind of designed for vehicles like cars and, and big trucks, but they do work in the RV. And then, of course, there's the, the white one that came with this new uh, RV system. So I've tested it out in a few locations between the different antennas and they're all pretty similar. Um, definitely the trucker antenna gives me 3 to 5 uh, dBm um, higher signal than the, the white one. And the white one there does a little bit better than the mag mount, but uh, they're all within 3 or 5, uh, five uh, dBm boost. So uh, what I really wanted to, to do today is show you the different uh, signals on the inside antennas. I'll leave, I'll leave the, the new uh, RV antenna installed on the roof there and then I can swap these antennas and we can see uh, what kind of signal strength they provide and uh, how far away you can get from the antenna. Because one of the, the things I was hoping for was maybe it would uh, fill the rig more with signal so we wouldn't have to be so close to the antenna. Even with this big white indoor antenna they use a lot for homes, I wasn't getting much, uh, much uh, distance. I had to have my device really close to it. And this little uh, square antenna, some people call it the chocolate bar antenna, it also didn't have much range. So let's get to it. First we have a little square antenna and we're getting about 95 uh, dBm there and full bars 4G right close to the, the antenna. Let's see if we can move that away a bit. Okay so next I'm gonna try one foot away and we're at 96. So we're still pretty good there. Let's try two feet away. Two feet away, we've dropped down into 100, 101, and we've lost a bar of signal, 103. So you can see, just two feet of distance has made a, a dramatic uh, move in the signal level. We'll try one more spot. We'll go about uh, five feet away up onto the, the kitchen counter here. Five feet away, we're at 108, back down to two bars. So at five feet we've lost pretty well all of our uh, reported uh, boost here for the little square truffle bar antenna. Next we'll try the big white antenna here. Let's put the phone beside it. And we're getting about 97. I've seen it flicker to 96 and we're getting full bars right beside the antenna. So once again we'll try one foot away now. In between, I'll let the phone settle down, so that's why I'm cutting away each time. Okay, one foot away, we've dropped down to 103, even 105. Well, that's not great, and we're down to three bars, dropped a bar, that's just one foot away. Let's go to two feet. Two feet away, we're down to 107, basically what I was reporting without any signal. So that white antenna is not uh, doing a very good job in the RV for sure. I'll give five feet a try as well. Five feet away, 108. Okay, so let's try the new uh, antenna from uh, WeBoost, the WeBoost RV one. Okay, so with the new antenna I'm showing 92 dBm. So that's the best so far. That's sitting right beside the antenna. Let's go a foot away. A foot away, I'm getting 94, 96. 
I'm still in the green range there and I'm still getting four bars. Okay, let's go two feet away now. Two feet away now and we're right at 100 dBm. We've just dropped out of the green zone there and we've lost a bar at three bars. Let's take her to five feet. And once again at five feet we've pretty well uh, lost all our boost versus having no signal booster at all turned on. So not too much difference, a little bit better maybe, a little bit more range but not really filling the RV like you would uh, would think. Um, I think anywhere between one and two feet is the best place to uh, to get a good signal. Well, I'm not claiming anything uh, very scientific here, <laughs> but I've tried it over uh, maybe ten different locations as we've been traveling the last uh, month or so from very strong locations to uh, super weak locations. There were several times, like you saw previously, where it actually allowed me to make a phone call and get a text out. And there's a few spots where the system got us online, so I really believe in the in the, the Wilson, the WeBoost products here. They, they do a good job. Um, there's a little bit of differences between the, the antennas, but not, not a whole lot. Uh, it seemed that big square white one wasn't as good as the, the new antenna, or even this little chocolate bar antenna. One thing you can do for that is you can velcro that right on the back of your phone. I'm not sure if you want that near your head when you're talking or not. Probably best to go hands-free with your devices if you're putting them really close to an antenna. I'm playing around with it. I also played around with the system in the cab of the truck. Um, all the different antennas. And what I found the best boost I got was with the little antenna right on the phone and the big trucker antenna here attached to uh, the mirror of my truck. I got up to almost uh, 50 uh, dBm boost out of that so that was the the top one. Most of them though most places I'm getting um, you know when the bar signals there I'm getting anywhere from uh, two to three bar boosts. So it'll bring it if you have one bar it usually brings it up to four maybe five bars if it's two usually right up to five bars of juice. Um, I also can set my MiFi into 3G and I'm seeing similar results on 3G. Um, on this I get a thing called with T-Mobile I get a thing called Edge Mode, mode which is I think like a 2.5G or something and I get similar results for that so you're looking with the system a good uh, two to three bar boost on it so that's not bad. It's just really a choice of uh, what kind of antenna you really like. But uh, I'm going to go with the, with the new system. Um, I really like this little antenna. They've weighted the bottom so it, it actually wants to stay up quite well. It's hard to knock over and when you put it down it doesn't fall over at all. So I really like that. I can move it around the rig. I have I think over 10, 13 foot of cord I can move around to different locations. Um, also the little white antenna. I was a little worried about this one because it stood up so tall even though it was on a spring. I might slam into something like a tree branch or something. The other one sits a little more low profile on the rig. Ugh. Welcome to the Oregon coast in the spring. Sunny day, then pouring rain and wind. Oh well, still beautiful. So let's wrap up this uh, review of the WeBoost 4G-X RV kit. I'll kind of go through my pros and cons. Um, first thing I like is it, it'll boost even extremely weak signals and I had a couple instance, instances where it actually I couldn't get a signal and it brought signal to life so that was pretty cool. Um, it also uh, increases my phone and MiFi battery life because when it's when they're trying to boost when they're trying to receive a weak signal their battery works overtime so I get a little bit of battery life out of my devices. Um, the installation was super easy um, and and the setup there's really no setup required either the 
the light blinks green and you're good to go or it flashes red and there's something wrong with your setup so you don't have to go into any web browser and set anything up which is cool the instruction booklet was super clear all the instructions for putting it together it really can be done by a you know any type of semi uh, talented uh, do-it-yourself or have no problem installing the system and get it working in the RV um, I like that it included both the the um, power supplies so I could put my 12 volt supply in so when I'm boondocking off grid I, you know I've got power for it all the time and uh, also the indoor antenna it's kind of nice looking well designed little unit looks good in the RV and like I say it doesn't it sits it sits really easily on the table it doesn't fall over uh, some of my dislikes, of course, what I mentioned earlier with the, the mounting bracket for the ladder, um, I was able to get around that, but uh, um, I, I wish they included something that, that fit on an RV ladder better since they were kind of putting it in the diagram there that, to use the RV ladder. And also, the inside antenna range is a little better, but it's not, you know, they kind of indicate it's it's you know you go four to ten feet but I'm just not experiencing that um, I am in a fifth wheel trailer of course and uh, I don't have a metal body like some some motorhomes are going to be you know metal uh, whereas so maybe maybe it makes a difference as far as because between the outside and the an inside antenna you can get some interference between the two which could cause a decrease in uh, broadcast range I'm not super familiar with all that myself, but uh, that's that's my theory anyway. <laughs> and uh, one more thing I'd like to mention is um, there was a couple times when the actual system decreased my speeds, and, uh, and it's kind of a weird thing. Uh, I'd say 85, 90 percent of the time I get a good boost, and my I see my speeds increase, my web pages load a lot snappier. Um, get good streaming video but there was a few times where it was actually better even though the, the the bars were lower and it showed a lower signal strength I was getting faster speeds so that may have something to do with the local cell antenna or maybe there was interference in the area so I just thought I'd mention that because it's uh, it doesn't work perfectly every time Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that review. Um, it's quite a long video, but I figured people would want a really in-depth uh, review of it because this thing goes, the little kit goes for around $500, so it's a fair uh, whack of cash to spend. But if you have to get online, and if you've ever experienced where you want to be online and you can't quite get online, um, it's well, well worth it. So anyway, um, until next time, this is Ray from LoveyRV.com. Happy trails, folks. Cheers.